Hi, I'm Kristen Eller, just Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I talk about science fiction and fantasy books and the awards that go with them. Today I'm talking about the Hugo novella category for this year. Um, there are six nominees in this category and I have finally read all of them. So I'm going to try to rank them for you in this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this category has been a rather large disappointment for me this year. I feel like maybe just in general, it was not a great year for novellas. There weren't any novellas that totally blew me away, or not very many. My top novellas that I read personally didn't get any nominations, and I think that they were loads better than the ones that did get nominated. I'm not sure what happened there if people just didn't read all the novellas that I read or, or what. But my favorite novellas were The Seep by Chana Porter and Bruce Demon by K.J. Parker. I also really enjoyed The AI Who Loved Me by Alyssa Cole. And I, this wasn't even one of my favorites, but I do think that Firewalkers by Adrian Tchaikovsky is still better than pretty much most of the, maybe all of the novellas that are actually nominated in this category. In last place, I have Riot Baby by Tochi Onyabuchi. And it kind of pains me to put this one in last place. And I also just want to qualify all of my ranks by saying that these are very loose. There's a chance that I'll change my mind about them. I kind of just don't love any of these. So take what I say with a grain of salt. But Riot Baby was the only one that I did not finish. I just found it to be really a little bit too abstract for my taste. It kind of hopped around from different times and perspectives and I had a hard time following what was going on and really caring enough about what was going on to keep reading and figure it out. I do know other people have really loved this and felt really moved by it and certainly the topic is very, very prescient. It's an important topic and I wanted to like it just for the fact that it does talk about police brutality and race and it really important things like that. So I'm sad that this one didn't work for me, but it really didn't. So it is my last choice in this category. Next, I would probably put Fin Up by Nino Cipri. This one, I actually loved the premise for this. It's the idea that there is a, it's basically Ikea, but they call it something else. Um, that there are portals to other worlds and um, someone gets lost and um, a couple of the co-workers have to go and look for them. And so the concept is just awesome. I love the concept of portal fantasy and I really was enjoying kind of the tone of the storytelling. Very, It was uh, critiquing capitalism and uh, it was kind of a dry humor sometimes and I don't know, I loved it. And so I started it out just like super on board and then it ended up being kind of action-y and it was kind of exploring this relationship between the two main characters and for some reason it just got really boring. I I just I had to push myself to just finish this book because I didn't care enough about what was going on. A plus for concept and critique of capitalism. I'm always for that, but it just as a whole didn't work really well for me. Next, I would put Upright Woman Wanted by Sarah Gailey. This one had some really wonderful moments, but on the whole, the tone of it was just so preachy and and volicious. And volicious meaning like it just hits you over the head with, with its message. It's just very strong, like, and it's a message that I am 100% behind, but it's just like, did you know that you know, people should be allowed to love whoever they want. Did you know that? That's important. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Um, so I just, it's a taste thing. I prefer my stories to be a little more subtle. Um, so it's really, I would rank it higher if it weren't for that. But it's also just not my aesthetic. I am not a, a person that enjoys the Western kind of aesthetic. And this was a Western kind of setting. Um, it's like a, a futuristic like we're so far in the future that now it looks like the wild west again so that's that's kind of cool and i know it really worked great for some other people but it just wasn't really my style and then with the preaching us on top of that i i don't know with all of that aside there were some really lovely moments and i really did enjoy parts of this a lot and it's not bad at all next i would put now this is where it starts to get tricky for me the empress of salt and fortune by nevo this one was just absolutely lovely it was 
beautiful writing, but it just kind of wasn't to my taste. And it's one of those things where I can recognize that this is a well-written, beautiful novella that I just personally didn't really enjoy a lot. It, I just wanted to go a little bit deeper. I wanted to understand the world a little bit more. I wanted to dig into the characters and their feelings and their journeys a little bit more. The feel of this novella is very much like someone is, well, literally someone is telling a story and you know it's like you're sitting there and someone's retelling what the, happened in the past which was very cool and it's just not my taste i think so i do think that that you know is worth worthy of being on this list just not my personal favorite next i'm gonna put i really don't know how to rank these top three guys i guess i'll put ring shout by p jelly clark this one I can recognize once again that this is good writing, but it didn't work really well for me. And once again, it's just not very subtle. Um, there are, this is set in the South, it's sort of like an alternate history kind of thing where clansmen are literal demons. And I just don't like that trope. It just doesn't work really well for me. I would rather not explain away hatred and bigotry by saying, oh, they're monsters or demons or whatever I would rather like really grapple with the fact that this monstrosity is within human hearts um, and I guess I just I prefer more subtlety um, but I know this worked really great for loads of other people and it has just won I believe the Locust Award and the Nebula Award so I would I'm expecting this one to win the Hugos honestly and I think that it does deserve it it is well written it does great things it talks about good things it's it's really great just not my favorite and then I guess in first place, and I'm saying like, I guess it's, but I still didn't love it all that much, is Come Tumbling Down by Sean McGuire. And I think just out of all of these, I think that's the one that I did end up enjoying the most, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's got some cool things going for it. I really liked the world that it was set in. It, I don't even know which one I saw, but when I was a kid, I saw this really really old-fashioned Frankenstein movie it was black and white and I don't know if it's like the classic classic one or if it's just one of the many <laughs> but this book feels like that movie like in terms of the world and that was super cool I really liked how that was done I think it's super imaginative um, Come Tumbling Down is an installment in the Wayward Children series which is a series about children that have stumbled upon doorways into other worlds in which they feel a, a really intense feeling of belonging and like they just fit there really well and then they wander back into our world and are trying to find these doors back to the worlds that they feel they belong in. And so Come Tumbling Down takes place in one of those worlds and the world is, they call it the Moors and it's just, it looks like an old black and white Frankenstein movie and it's super cool. I mean, on the whole, I, I'm not in love with the series. I'm not, I don't super enjoy it, but I think what this did was cool. And I did listen to the audiobook for this one, and I didn't find out until the very, very end that the reader for the audiobook is the author, Shannon McGuire. So that was cool. So that is my ranking. That's probably what I'm going to put on my ballot for the Hugos. Uh, at the same time, it's very fluid at this point. I might change these rankings. They could change significantly. I don't know because the problem is that I just don't love any of these and I don't hate any of them either. They're just all very middle of the road eh, kind of books that ultimately I was kind of bored by most of these. So I don't know, but please comment below. I want to know what your ranking would be, which of these really worked for you or did not work for you. Tell me which novellas you feel were overlooked when the nominations were put in this year <laughs> and that's it. Definitely make sure that you're subscribed if you want to hear my other rankings for the other categories of the Hugos this year. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.